Okay, battle buddies, here we go. Education, right? I see it every day. Nobody's going to hire an enlisted guy that ain't got no education, right? Stop saying that. Sounds like you ain't got no education. That's not true. That is not true. I'm going to make the case for you that you can position that proves you have education, okay? So here's the real deal. If we look at the strengths and weaknesses of a formal education from some guys that are in some corporate office somewhere setting like the standard for what smart is, you'd be surprised at how similar the private sector's education is to the military. It's just set their sanction differently. So if we look at strengths, okay? Strengths, if you're 22, years old, right? That's kind of the average age of a transition guy out of the army, for example, on a four-year contract. 22, four years of college, four years of active duty. Okay, if we got education, I can look and see if you have a bachelor's degree, an associate's degree, whatever blah, blah, blah degree that you happen to get from whatever state or private school. I can look at your GPA. I can look at what the thing was that you went and got educated on, right? I know if you have a 3.5 GPA, that I can probably expect a 3.5 performance every day in the office. That's, as a hiring manager, something that I can look at that's quantifiable. It's an indicator as to what to expect in future performance. Makes sense? It should. All right. So, other strength when it comes to what is your education in, right? If you guys don't know about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, I highly suggest that you do some research on it. But it's this thing that lets you get to this enlightened position ultimately at the end of the day. Okay? Now, if we take a look at layer number one, the physiological layer, that's food, water, shelter, doing the dirty, all of those types of things that ultimately lead to the progression of humanity. If you don't have a roof over your head, chances are your life is a hell of a lot tougher than someone who does have a roof over their head. Anyway, Maslow's hierarchy of needs. Dig into it. It's good stuff, right? Plus, it's kind of, when, when, when you know about Maslow's, you can make an argument for lots of other purposes, but that's a whole different topic. I'll, I'll get into my political channel down the road. All right, so if you look at the very top of Maslow's, you have, you have, you have the self-actualization point, okay? That means that you just sit all day long with your legs crossed, your hands on your knees in, I don't know what position it's called in yoga. It's been about a year and a half since I've been in a yoga class but you just sit and radiate enlightenment. You've made it, right? Those are those art history degrees, the music degrees, all of those types of things that you don't necessarily have to have to live on a day-to-day -day basis. As you can see, the artwork behind me is artwork from when my son was three years old. If you look at the artwork that's in front of me, that stuff I picked up at a pretty cool shop here in Minneapolis. So, I appreciate it, it's hanging on the wall. I don't seem like an art guy, but I, I do have some appreciation for it. So, if you have a four-year degree in art history and you need your car fixed to get to work, what good does that degree do for you at the end of the day, right? Okay, so what are some of the weaknesses? It's expensive. It takes time. Um, you know, this, this Maslow's thing, is it relevant to, to making the world a better place? Um, at the end of the day, when you take on a new employee, even if they came from your number one competitor, even if, and they got 20 years of experience, you still have to train that person. 
on how you do it at company Y. We don't care how you did it at company X. This is how you do it at company Y. Back in my day, we used to use there's the right way, the wrong way, and the army way, right? It's the same concept. It's the same exact thing. So weakness, even if this person has a 4.0 average and they happen to, to do some amazing shit while they're in college at 21 years old, does that make up for 20, 30, 40 years of experience in the corporate world or military and corporate world or a combo of whatever? No, it doesn't. You still have to train that person on how to replace you down the road. Okay, TRADOC, that's what the Army calls it. At least back in the day, I know it's been there since the 70s. It's like Training Indoctrination Command, okay? That's a certifying body. That means that if you went through this course for one week or 100 weeks, 52 weeks, if you're going to be an SF doc, whatever, and you've got the ability, you've got a certifying body that says, this person is good at this stuff. How is that different than a college, a trade school? Tell me. Write in the comments below, tell me that I'm wrong. I have an MBA. Tell me that my army training isn't good enough to do 80, 90% of jobs out there if I've got 10 or 20 years of experience. As you get older, education from an employer perspective declines, okay? I see resumes every day. These guys will list 50 warrior courses and shit that they've been through. Why do you put it on there? Why? Why, why do you put on combat lifesaver if you're going to go and be a fucking garbage man? Or if you're going to, I don't know, go and be a, 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 an executive assistant or a barista. It doesn't matter, guys. It doesn't matter. If it's not relevant, don't take up the real estate. I had 17-page resume. Person is probably the most qualified person I've ever seen before. But as a hire manager, I'm not reading that shit. I don't have time. I, I, I 17 pages on a resume, and let's say I got to sort through 30 of these things. I'm going to break open one of my snowmobiling magazines or my gun magazines and read about new ballistic shit that's coming out for long-range shooting. I've got better things to do with my time than to read a 17-page resume. If it's not relevant education, don't include it. There's no need to. It doesn't make sense. So, another great thing about every branch you go to school, you get paid. You get TDY. If you're Air Force, they probably pay your green fees. It's pretty badass, right? You go to a private school, you come out with a hundred grand bill at the end of the day or more. While in the military, you get certified and trained in leadership and how to do this craft in such an amazing way that the organization's lasted for 250 years. My point is you do have an education. You just have to know how to narrate it properly. Don't sell yourself short. You've been through some of the toughest schools that the world has ever seen in the military. You pulled up with more bullshit than most employers expect out of their leadership, okay? You guys dealt with the E4 Mafia for a really long time, depending on how long you're, you were in the military. And if you were E4 Mafia, don't tell anybody about it. It's like Fight Club. Don't talk about it. It exists. Okay? So, you do have an education. Just learn how to capture it, right? Make sure that it's relevant to the role that you're applying for, and you will get the job every single time, as long as you're not applying just through HR systems. So don't let that system knock you out by default. Anyway, have a great day, battle buddies. Send me an email. Put some comments down below. Keep bringing your friends here. And let's get all of our vets the information that they deserve to transition fully into jobs that they deserve. Have a good day. See ya.